Welcome back to another installment in my high yield video question bank series. For those of you joining us for the first time in this series, this is the video series where I create high yield questions and I'm forming my own question bank, but in video format. So instead of spending hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on these overrated question banks, you can come to this channel and watch these videos absolutely free. And I'm going to be posing third order challenging questions that will train your brain to recognize high yield patterns so that on test day, when you sit to take USMLE or Comlex, you've already experienced the challenging thought process needed to succeed and get the question right. Before I get into today's video, please click the subscribe button. Again, the more subscribers that I get on my channel, the higher my videos appear on YouTube and therefore the more medical students I'll be able to help with these videos. So please subscribe, it's very much appreciated. Let's get into today's question. A six-year-old male presents with his parents to the emergency department. The patient has been complaining of severe left-sided hip pain for the past week. The parents say that the patient has been, quote, limping all over the house, end quote, and appears to not want to walk as much due to the pain. They note the pain is especially bad following baseball practice. On exam, you note an otherwise healthy appearing male with an antalgic gait. Flexion, abduction, and external rotation of the left hip elicits pain. The patient's groin is mildly tender on palpation. Internal rotation of the affected limb causes the patient to scream out and start crying, and you note severely restricted range of motion. Which of the following is true of this disease process? A. Ortolani and Barlow maneuvers will reveal a clunking sound. B. A major risk factor for this disease is childhood obesity. C. The patient's pain is the result of increased axial force on the femoral head. D. An x-ray of the affected limb will be normal. Or E. The pain is due to avulsion of the secondary ossification center of the proximal limb. Pause the video if you want some time to think about this because if you're ready, I'm going to give you the answer. The answer to this question is D, an x-ray of the affected limb will be normal. Let's look at the vignette and see what was given to us and see if we can figure out what the diagnosis is. I've highlighted in red the really important parts of this question. So you've got severe left hip pain, that's especially bad following exercise. The patient has an antalgic gait. Flexion, abduction, and external rotation of the left hip causes pain. So that's the favor test. The groin is tender to palpation and internal rotation causes the most amount of pain where the patient screams out and starts crying. So all of this taken together and the fact that this is a six-year-old male should point you in the direction of leg calve Perth's disease. So in a nutshell, very briefly, this disease is basically avascular necrosis of the femoral head. Classically, it's going to affect males way more than females. The ratio is actually four to one. Usually these patients will be somewhere in the age range of four to 10 years old. Very, very high yield. And what I put as the correct answer is that the x-ray is actually normal for up to six months. And if you get a question that says the x-ray is normal, and then the follow-up question is, what do you do? The answer is going to be to get either further imaging or repeat imaging because having a normal x-ray is clinically not useful. When you have leg calf Perth's disease, the Faber test, which is flexion, ab, ab, abduction, and external rotation, that's, that test is going to cause pain in the affected side. And internal rotation specifically causes an immense amount of pain. So all of this information taken together, of course, suggests to you that this is leg calves, Perth's disease, and that's why D is the correct answer. But if you're sitting there looking at choice A, B, C, and E, wondering to yourself, what the hell, why are these answers incorrect? Let's go through those now and talk about what disease process those answer choices are alluding to. So for A, Ortolani and Barlow maneuvers will reveal a clunking sound. This refers to developmental dysplasia of the hip. So this is what you learned in your pediatrics rotation if you've gone on clinical rotations, or if you're just looking in your first aid or your question bank, this is the 
invasive looking test, although it actually causes the infant no pain whatsoever, where you just move their hips around and you're feeling for that clunking sound. But if a question wants you to select developmental dysplasia of the hip, they're going to give you some an infant. They're going to give you a zero to two year old. They're not going to give you a six year old male who's playing baseball. So because of that, you don't use the Ortolani or the Barlow maneuver in those with this disease. And that is not the correct answer. Both B and C refer to the same disease process. So a major risk factor for this disease is childhood obesity. And C, the patient's pain is the result of increased axial force on the femoral head. Both of those answers are actually referring to slipped capital femoral epiphysis, or SCIFI for short. And SCIFI is pretty high yield on USMLE and Comlex. And they can give you either an obese 10 to 12 year old, that's the classic um, patient. It's usually going to be a really fat 10 to 12 year old male who has hip pain. It's due to increased axial force, but the most high yield thing, aside from understanding that obesity is a major risk factor, is actually being able to pick this one up on an x-ray. So in contrast to leg calves Perth disease, where the x-ray is normal, in slip capital femoral epiphysis, you see the ice cream sign. So the ice cream sign is named because when you look at the femoral head, it literally looks like a, quote, scoop of ice cream falling off of a cone. So if they show you an x-ray and they're talking about a young fat male with hip pain, think skiffy. And the other way to think about this logically and to train your brain is that if they're showing you something on an x-ray that looks pathological, it's definitely not leg calf's purse disease because again, the x-ray is normal. That is skiffy. Choice E, the pain is due to avulsion of the secondary ossification center of the proximal limb. This is osgood schlatter disease. So you may actually have a, a little variant of this. So this will classically be in young male or female athletic children. So these are the kids that play soccer and get kicked in the shin all the time. These are the kids that play baseball and slide into second base and bang up their knee. Because of this, repeated avulsion of that secondary ossification center causes a little bulge in the proximal tibia. So actually, if you played sports as a kid, bend over right now and feel your tibia. Work your way down from your kneecap. And if you feel a little bone, a bony prominence bulging out, that could either be osgood schlatter disease or a little um, variant of it where it's not full-blown osgood schlatter but the disease process is basically the same. That's it for this question. Little tricky because a lot of these sound really similar on paper, but just to summarize and, and give you sort of a takeaway point here, if they want you to think skiffy, they're going to give you the obese 10 to 12 year old male, and they might even show you that ice cream sign. If they want you to take developmental dysplasia of, of the hip as the correct answer, they're going to give you like a zero to two year old. They're going to describe some maneuver and they're going to give you that palpable or audible clunking sound. Osgood slaughter is going to be somebody who has repeated avulsion of their proximal tibia and have that bony prominence sticking out with some pain in that area. And then, of course, if they want you to pick leg cows Perth's disease, the x-ray will be normal and you'll have all of the findings that you see in the red text described in this vignette. I hope that this video was useful to you. I hope you're able to narrow your differential when you have a young pediatric patient with pain in the hip or pain in the knee. If you like this video, please subscribe. Remember that in the description of any of my videos, you can click the link to my Patreon page. Sign up to support the channel. Good luck. Keep it going.